Hello, my name is Kelly Bluen. I am a certified Zen Tangle teacher. Welcome to 15 Minutes of Zen. In these videos, I show you how to make one tangle pattern using the Zen Tangle method of drawing, which simply means one line at a time. So today I'm using my Micron pen. This is a PN plastic nib pen a graphite pencil for some drawing and shading, and a blending tool called a tortillon. I'm also using a two inch by two inch paper tile um, called the Bijou Tile, and these are from Zentangle.com. All of these are available on Zentangle.com, or you can reach out to me at Let's Tangle on Facebook, or use whatever pens, pencils, and paper you have on hand. Okay, so today's tangle is called Fletch, and it was created by Heidi K, a CZT, and it is number 24 in our series called Inktober. So for the month of October each year, we try to put pen to paper for 31 days in a row. So Stephanie Jennifer, another certified Zentangle teacher, puts together a list of 31 tangles for us to try. So today's tangle is Fletch. At the end of this video, I will be adding Fletch to a larger compilation piece that has the first 23 tangles already on it. Okay, here we go. So when Heidi shows how to do Fletch, she does it as a grid. So she puts in a square and then divides it into fourths and does it four times. I love that idea. It turns out beautiful, but I think it's a little bit intricate, and I think that we're just going to do it in one larger piece and not four times, okay? And then if you've never tried shading or you're not comfortable with shading, this one is going to be a really good lesson in how to shade because there's a lot of intricate little pieces to it. Okay, let's get started. We're going to begin by putting a dot in each of the four corners. And then connecting those dots with a straight line. And when I straight, I, I say straight, I mean it can be a little curvy or a little wonky. It doesn't really matter. Okay. So to make Flutch, she begins with two orbs. And so we're going to make these at least as wide as the end of my pen. And we're going to put one up here on top and one down here at the bottom. And I'm going to add a reflection to each one just to make them look a little more orb like. Okay. So if you are familiar with the Zentangle method of drawing, we do the shape of flux quite often, and this is flux. It's this little teardrop shape, but instead of being straight on both edges, we try to kind of curve in one of the sides to give it some personality. So if you want to continue with pencil right now until you get yours filled out, you can do that and then ink it in later. I'm going to go ahead and attempt to do it in pen. So let's see how this goes. All right, the first flux shape I'm going to put in is going to come out the side over here. So off to the right. And I'm going to scoop it around here about to the middle. And I'm going to touch this edge and then I'm going to come back up. Okay, I'll do mine in pencil as well. Then you won't feel like you have to do it in pen right away. Okay, so I'm gonna start in this little corner here. I'm gonna come out and curve in. And ideally, I think I would like it to touch here, so I'll just make that a little larger. I got this nice little curve in here. Kind of looks like a dog ear. Okay, then we need to do the same thing on this side. I 
like that. So again, I'm trying to touch and I'm trying to go up about halfway through the tile. The next one, we're gonna begin from that same little corner up here where the orb meets the frame. And this time we're gonna curve around this way. And I'm gonna to try to make it maybe touch over here, but I'm not that concerned. I just wanna make sure it's nice and big. It did not touch, but that's okay. So nice and big. So again, it starts in that same little spot, swoops around and comes in. Then we're gonna do one from this little nook right in here and we're gonna come out this way. That one was pretty huge. Okay. So we started on the right side of this orb and the left side of this orb. All right, I like how those look, so I'm going to ink them in before moving on. Just gonna follow around that little orb there and swoop out. I kind of darken in those little areas there where they meet. Okay, now that we have our orbs and our first two cute little flux shapes, we're going to go back to our pencil to do this next part. So she was playing around. There's a there's a great story um, if you go to um, Seven Forest, Five Rivers. Um, that's where Stephanie Jennifer um, submits this list of tangles and each list or each tangle has a link you can go to and you can go to Heidi Kay's blog and read her story about this. But she was playing around with a pattern similar and she thought about putting in something behind it that then we can put tangles kind of weaving in and out of it. That sounds like a lot, I know. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm going to, on this top corner up here, I'm just gonna kind of pencil in like, like a rounded little area. And then I'm gonna bring it down here, come out this end, and back up. So essentially I am making a triangle shape, just rounding the edges slightly. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this side. And I like to kind of think about this part of this triangle sort of matching up similar over here. So this space in between is kind of the same. I don't know if that's necessary. So we wanna make this rounded edge of the triangle over here. Come out all the way to the corner and back down. Should probably go in a little bit more. That's why it's good to make things in pencil sometimes. Okay, so we have a triangle with a point down here and a triangle with a point up there. I am going to ink over that. Lifting my pen when it meets another tangle. It comes back down over here. I am going 
to ink in those little corners if there's any space left. Um, I don't have to do that one, just the four corners. Okay. So we're practicing kind of this over, under, halibu effect where things kind of tuck in behind each other. And now we're going to add an aura on the inside of this triangular shape. So I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this little, not too thick, not too thin, this aura that goes all the way around. And the same thing on this one, or that inside area. I'm just going to thicken up my out, outer edges here. Just to kind of clean that up a little bit. Okay, so we have this cute little um, triangle, two of them that are underneath those flux shapes. Now we're gonna add two more flux shapes. You can see why I didn't wanna do this four times in a small area. It's beautiful, but it's, um, it's quite congested for trying to learn a tangle. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my pencil. And I'm going to start from this little corner down here. And this one is going to come up and just sort of bump into the one on the left. So I'm going to bump it up here and it's going to go behind that little line and come back out here. Does that make sense? If I made it smaller, it could just bump into the edge and come down. Doesn't matter if it tucks behind this or touches the edge. And now we're gonna take this little nook up in here and we're gonna come down and do one that crosses behind um, this little line. Okay. I'm going to make that one a little bit thinner because I'd like to have some space in the middle. Okay, so now we've kind of built this layered thing of these two little flux in the back and then these two triangles and then the flux on top. So we've made this layer. So I'm going to ink those in. Just picking up my pen when I get to another flux or when I get to that little bar. Isn't that pretty? Once I have that in, I am going to grab my eraser and just try to get some of these little lines out of here just to clean it up a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to put in a background just for some texture and for some consistency. And to do that, I'm just going to do really light straight lines. So I can start up here. And I'm gonna finish this space here and let them come out on this side. I'm gonna go over here and add some. Essentially, I would love for them to match up perfectly over here, but I'm not going to worry about it. 
I'm going to continue down here. In the center area here, all of these lines need to come across to come out the other side. So I'm going to try to keep that same width, although I'm not matching them up perfectly. Now Heidi does not put this background on hers, but her examples have a lot of color in the background and they're just beautiful. But since I'm not using color, I thought this would be a nice little textured background. And I want your eyes to be able to realize that there's the lines way in the back, then the flux, then those little bars, then more flux. It'd be cute too with just some stippling. There we go. We're already a minute and a half over and we haven't even finished and we haven't shaded yet. So it's gonna be a little bit longer of a video. All right, so in my flux, I'm gonna put a line and then three dots, just for a little decoration. A line, one, two, three, a line. Oh, I got all little spots back there. One, two, three. Of course, there are endless variations of how you could decorate your flux, but that's what we're gonna do. All right, I'm gonna put my initials down here, and then I am going to do some shading. So this one, requires kind of a lot and I'm gonna go quickly so we can get this video done but um I'm gonna start with let me see I'm gonna start with this top flux so I'm just gonna go right along the outside edge of that flux because it's on the top layer and it goes over everything so I've got four of those so I'm gonna put shading all around those four And then I'm gonna go around my orb as well because that orb was the first thing we drew and that goes over other things. And then I just want to push that away from the edge slightly. Just kind of softening it with my tool. Around the orb and around that flux. Look at already, look at those shadows that are forming. That looks so cool. Okay, then I'm going to go around those two flux in the back. And so I go right along the edge until I get to another flux or that little bar shape. And because this flux is behind that bar, we are not going to put a shadow on it right now. So around that flux. Push that out slightly. And now I want to go on both sides of that triangular bar. So I'll do this one first. I'm gonna go along the outside edge, wherever I can see it. So right here it goes over this flex shape. I need to put a shadow there. Same thing on the inside of that bar. I'm gonna go on the inside all the way around. And then I can soften the outside edge of the bar and that inside edge of the bar. 
Okay, I know that was a lot, but look at that layering that's happening. Isn't that so cool? So over here, I wanna go on the inside edge of that little bar. I think my daughter is using a hair dryer right now. A little background noise. Inside edge of the bar and that outside edge where it goes over flux and wherever it goes over anything else. Soften that inside edge, soften that outside edge. We did it. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, I just love it so much. Okay, so there is Fletch. It's absolutely beautiful. I love it, and I'm excited to add it to our larger piece. So here is... Here is our larger piece. The last few videos, for some reason, when I go to switch over and I zoom out, I stop the video and then I have to like piece them together. So I'm sorry if that wasn't a clean cut. Okay, so we've got Fletch right here. Absolutely beautiful by Heidi K. And we're gonna add it to this piece. So I know that if I was really creative, I wouldn't even have to put it in a square shape. Right, I could just draw some flux, draw some cool little bar shape behind it, but um, I'm scared to do that, so I think I'm going to keep it in as similar a shape as I can, and I think I'm going to tuck it in down here. Doesn't that seem like it would look nice down in there? That's what I'm thinking. Okay, so I'm going to zoom back in. Hopefully I don't stop recording. All right, well, let's try this together. I'm excited, but I'm also a little bit nervous. Okay, so I'm thinking about this space. I am not going to draw my square, although you can if you're comfortable doing that. But I'm gonna put in my orbs and we're just gonna kind of see what happens. So I need an orb up here. And I need an orb down here. All right, so far so good. I'm gonna add my little reflection. That looks pretty good. And now I need to start putting in those flux shapes. If you wanna do this part in pencil, you can. Make this so you can see what I'm doing pretty well here. Okay, so my first flux shape is gonna go this way and curve back in. And this one is gonna go up this way. Because I'm next to this tangle, I'm going to let it just go right behind it. I want to go large because remember, I want it to be about halfway through my piece there. And like that. Okay. I'm going to add my little decoration right now just because I'm thinking about it. One two, three. Of course, there are lots of ways that you could decorate that if you wanted to. Oh, look at that's our little Prima over here has those little flex shapes. So we're kind of matchy matchy right there. Okay, once I get those in, now I need to jump over my circle and do one this way. And because I'm not working in a perfect square, I'm just going to let it go. I'm just going to let it go however far I want. I mean, that wasn't super far, I guess, but one, two, three. And then this one is going to jump over this way. I'm taking senior pictures today of my little niece as soon as I'm done with this. So there's kind of a, a girl's day happening two rooms down from me where they're doing their hair and makeup and getting ready for senior photos. So, okay. So I've got those two flux in. So that looks good. Or those four, I guess. And now I need to put in those little triangles. So I'm going to switch to pencil because I'm working in such an odd area, but um, I think I can do this. Okay. So I'm going to put in that triangular shape right here. And it begins where this orb is. So that's where the base of my triangle is going to be. And then I'm gonna go up. 
all the way up here. And then this is gonna come through here and come up there. Okay, look at all those funny edges we're working with, but as long as you can imagine that triangle behind there, you're good to go. All right, now I've got an even stranger spot over here. So I need that top of the triangle and then I want it to be parallel to this line. Coming down here and then going back up. That's about the best I can do. All right, I'm gonna ink that in. We're committing to it. Curve down, down. Do that little edge down there, the edge of the triangle. And then up this way and that way. Then I need to aura the inside. You don't have to go too tiny with this. You can do a nice thick aura if you'd like. I can't really add anything down there. Okay, it's looking kind of cool. So our next step is adding those last two flux shapes that we really want to tuck in behind these little bars. So go ahead and do it in pencil if you would like, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to do it with pen. So I'm gonna have mine coming out here and tucking in there. Kind of goes behind. I'm gonna add my, now when I did this one up here, I had it kind of leaning towards the left and this one I sort of went to the right. I don't know why, but it doesn't matter. Then we've got one on this side. That again, tucks behind that little bar. Since I have this whole space to fill between these other tangles, I'm gonna let that little background line go all the way across, okay? If you don't wanna do the background texture line, you could just leave yours white or you could do some auraing or add some orbs. But I'm gonna start with just kind of the center line. That kind of gives me that visual. And I'm just gonna let it go all the way. Keep going. I love putting in these little lines as background on my patterns because it just adds this little bit of texture a little bit of intricate feeling. Gotta imagine all the spots that, that would be peeking through. And I still have space above here, so I'm just going to let that keep going. Because no one's here to stop me, so I'm just going to let it go. And then down here, I'm going to do more over here to connect this to that next pattern. All right, you guys, that was kind of a lot, but we did it. Whew. Okay, shading. I know this scares some of you, but you can do it. Start with the highest points. So that's gonna be my orb, around the edge of my orbs. And then around the outside of those top flux, 
those ones that kind of go over everything else. There's four of them. Those first four that we made, put that graphite right on the outside edge of that. Try not to let it go into the white. Keep it on that outside edge. I'm gonna grab my blending tool and I'm gonna push it away from the orb. And then I'm gonna push it away from those four flux shapes. Look at that, look at that like dynamic there already. Okay, now I'm gonna do those two flux shapes and I'm gonna go on the outside of those. There's not a lot of outside edge that you can see. Push that away from that line. And now we're gonna go on the inside and the outside of those little triangular shapes. I'm gonna do my inside edge first, right over that flux. And I can't do anything down there. Then I'm gonna do the outside edge. and the inside and outside edge of this one. Soften all of those. Look at how amazing that looks. I'm also gonna take my blending tool and I'm just gonna swish a little bit up into these flex shapes. Just a little bit, isn't that cute? Okay, the last thing I need to do, and this is the tedious part, I'm gonna do it kind of quickly. I'm just going to outline where um, a shape goes over our new one. So remember when we made this, what was that called? It was like two days ago, Sendeo. We already added that shading, so I don't need to do that. But on Prima over here, I need to add some shading around Prima. And look at it, it goes right over my flux shape. And what that does is kind of pushes that flux shape behind Prima. And then over here, what was that one called? Oh my goodness, you guys, I've made so many, I'm forgetting. Nut, um, walnuts. So I'm gonna go around the edge of walnuts. And give that a little shadow. I don't want it to be on walnuts, okay. And then I'm going to go along this whole bottom edge and connect it over to the other side where I put that graphite down. Push that up. I'm also realizing that I didn't um, shade Prima yet, so I'll have to do that maybe next time. All right, we're going to zoom out, check out how that looks. What do you think? I think it looks kind of beautiful, and I like that little bit of texture in there. I love it. That was not a simple one. We've had some challenging ones this month. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed that one. Again, practice, practice, practice. I'm going to show you a little bit of one of them that I was doing where Heidi had it in the four sections. So you can see where it just gets kind of tiny, and I enjoyed doing it as a single more than I liked doing it in the four. All right, we'll see you tomorrow for day 25. So exciting. Please share your work on my Facebook page called Let's Tangle and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.